Hello, how is everybody doing tonight? I'm Ken Barbie. I'm Pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Dirty Laundry. What are we getting into tonight? Okay, so tonight, guys, we're going to be talking about the ultimate betrayal. Hmm. What a note that can, because, see, you, you like to be like you real ready and know everything. I, I got this. We got, we got everything. Hold on, I, I'd like to read your note. <laughs> is, is that okay? Go ahead. How was your weekend? My weekend was great. It's okay. May 3rd. No, it's not. Day 3, Can Barbie Appreciation Month. Oh, my God. Y'all got to hear this for the next month. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see my face? <laughs> you appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what we're talking about tonight. <laughs> okay, y'all. So tonight we're talking about the ultimate betrayal. Do you have a story you'd like to um, tell us? Maybe you got a friend of me out there. Uh, somebody that's shady in your life. Because we did, we did post um, today, uh, you know you shady when. So you can call us tonight and tell us uh, you know you shady when story or quote or. Right. And make sure you hashtag and tweet us on Twitter with the hashtag you know you shady when. And then hashtag dirty laundry. Um, I'm on Twitter at it's Kim Barbie. That's ITF Kim Barbie. And I'm on Twitter as PLL Pumpkin. So, um, and on the screen you see our Instagram. Ken, um, he's so popular that he gets two different names, but <laughs> PLL Pumpkin is me on Twitter <laughs> and Instagram. It's Ken Barbie Appreciation Month, so you I get two names. Yeah. Thank you. Official Ken Barbie <laughs> or it's Ken Barbie. <laughs> but getting time. back to the topic, <laughs> um, tonight I have the top ten signs of a shady person. So these are the ways that you can go ahead and spot the shady people in your life, whether that be in a relationship, mm -hmm. something that could be just a friend or even a family member. Shady people are all over. They don't discriminate, unfortunately. So I'm going to teach you how to spot them out and get rid of them before they hit you too hard with that ultimate betrayal. And tonight we're going to try something new. We're going to get you all to call in during the entertainment news. And if you got something you'd like to say about any of the stories that Ken has tonight, definitely call us at 804 915 Five two zero two, or you can tweet us, like we said, or Instagram us. We're we all over Facebook. I'm excited. Let's just get started. Okay. I cannot really want to. I see you got your computer. <laughs> Let's go, Ken. All right, so we're gonna kick things off with the dirty, which is our news and entertainment segment. And of course, you can catch these stories and more at itskimbarbie.com. First, this week, ladies and gentlemen, apparently, the Diva claws are back out at American Idol. Over the past few months, Mariah Carey and Nicki Minaj have managed to keep their fighting to a minimum, but things got pretty ugly this past week. At one point during the show, Nicki pulled a cotton swab out of her purse and told Mariah she needed to clean her ears. And during another segment, <laughs> while critiquing a contestant, Mariah somewhat taunted Nicki over having no number ones on the Billboard chart, while of course Mariah has 18 to date. Oh God. <laughs> Things spilled over to Twitter yesterday after Perez Hilton addressed the subject, and he said that Mariah burned Nikki with all of her insults. Nikki, of course, snapped back on Twitter. She stated, burn. She said, I tied her record for Hot 100 entries in only three years of being in the game. Yep, a black female rapper. What you should be doing with your messy ass is asking why a woman so successful at her age is still so insecure and bitter. Mm. She continued, all them number ones get J-Lo's phone is ringing. I guess having a personality, being a secure woman, and giving genuine critiques still trumps that. Okay, y'all are too shady. I have to go. <sighs> of course, Nikki is responding to rumors that Idol is working Mariah out of the door and replacing her with J-Lo. Okay. Um, of course, Fox representatives have denied that, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. It, it all just makes me so sad. It just, why is it still going just, on, you know? <laughs> I like Mariah and Nikki, and yeah. what I will say, though, is Mariah Carey is a legend. So it's, it's certain people that you just have to respect in the game. I know she, we may not know what's going on behind the scenes. Exactly. She may be being shady, but I just don't see coming at Mariah. Like, if this was Whitney, would I Nikki be going at her? I don't get Mariah. She just seems so nice, you know? Mariah is a She got up. really upset, though, about this whole ordeal with Nicki Minaj in the beginning. It's, it's gotten a little out of hand, so I wouldn't be I surprised. I just don't want her to go back to um, getting help. Help of what? To um, talking to a psychiatrist and stuff. There's nothing wrong. Now you're disrespecting Mariah. 
just saying it happened before. Oh, you don't respect any of the divas. You don't understand it happened before. <laughs> I watch TV, Tony. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah, I love you. There's nothing wrong. Then you do too. I love you too. Thank you. But again, I don't want her to end up, you know, falling back down, relapsing, you know. I just want Nikki and Mariah to chill out. Mm-hmm. Or or they both can leave the show. I don't think anyone really you watches think American it's got Idol. Something like to do with her husband's name being Nick though. Nick Nikki. What? <laughs> we, we should be beefing with him and let's, about it. Let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> I'm trying to make it better, people. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, so according to TMZ, after suffering a series of seizures last March, Lil Wayne found himself back in the hospital Tuesday night when he had yet another seizure. <laughs> Lil Wayne spent almost an entire week in the ICU back in March after the 30-year-old suffered multiple seizures that almost cost him his life. Um, he was back in the hospital on Tuesday and was released early Wednesday morning. Wayne has since gone on to dispel rumors that his addiction to codeine or scissor caused him to have seizures instead of attributing them to being epileptic. So instead, of, he doesn't blame the drugs. He mm. says he's epileptic and he's been having these seizures for years. Wayne, come on. Wayne, get your life. <laughs> we all know that this is due to codeine milkshakes. <laughs> what? Codeine milkshakes. They make them now. Milkshakes, though, with codeine in them. Really? I'd be surprised. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? You told me about something new, Karen. <laughs> um, Where can you get that from? McDonald's? I don't want it, so I don't know. <laughs> God. <laughs> but Wayne <laughs> responded to the reports Wednesday morning when he stated, I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. He didn't really address any further what happened. But I just want him to get his life together. Me too. Do you think it's due to him actually being epileptic or do you think it's due to drugs? Wayne on drugs. <laughs> All of them. Every single one. He on drugs. Every single one. I don't care what the TV say or what Wayne say out his own mouth. <laughs> He's on drugs. The boy... Look at when he was younger and how he's changed. It's like he's zoning out. Even his lyrics and his music is changing. Like, something is seriously wrong. I want Wayne to take a break. You think it's Molly? It's every drug pumpkin. It's not just one. Look at But they're popular now. Hey. Kids, don't do drugs. I don't know anything about it. But, um, I just want him to take a break. I don't get excited for Wayne anymore. Like, I would get excited for, you know, a whole... I don't thing. think his last um, few CDs did good. Oh, yeah, you get excited about Hope. That's my That's uncle. That's your uncle, right? My uncle Hope. Shout yeah. out to Uncle Hope. Yeah. Hope Blue's doing well. Love you Blue. guys. That, yeah, I know that's Drake kid, right? Speaking of my <laughs> royal <laughs> Speaking of my royal family, the Carters. Oh, God. <laughs> my favorite story of the night. <laughs> Beyonce has demands that may be extreme other than wanting us to bow down. Beyonce's alleged list of tour rider demands have surfaced to the internet. Although their, her demands may seem extreme, I don't think they're that bad. No one else has to get up on that stage for two hours in heels and perform. So I think she's entitled to what she wants. But I'm going to give you guys the list. Okay. Pumpkin, let me know what you think. You guys can call in as well. The online report. Number one, hand-carved ice balls. These hand-carved ice balls are made only from Switzerland imported water, and they're for Bee to suck on after each show to preserve her voice. What is Jay-Z there for? Hmm. Sucking on him will not preserve her voice, Pumpkin. Hmm. My <laughs> <laughs> Number two, freshly painted white walls and fresh toilet seats. I don't want to sit on a dirty toilet, so I completely understand that one. What? Do you want to sit on a dirty toilet? What, what white got to do with it? Why I got to be painted? What, need, what is the she problem? She needs to know that it's fresh. Do you want to sit on a green one? Would you feel comfortable? What if it was brown? <laughs> okay. Next. <laughs> Ken, really. Red toilet paper. Now, this one, I love you, B, but I don't know. I didn't even know you could get red toilet paper. So that one I can't explain. Ken, that but shows you what level we're on. Our money don't run that long. You don't just go in the store and buy red toilet paper, can you? I don't know where to okay. get that. I don't know. Who, where do you request that? <laughs> Not in Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, 100% pure cotton clothing for all staff members. That's reasonable. She wants them to be Is she allergic to something? She wants them to be comfortable. She appreciates them. <laughs> 
Number five, titanium drinking straws. These straws cost $935 and are used to drink special alkaline water. I don't know. I, that one, I, I can't explain that either. But I'm, I'm guessing it's to preserve her voice. A $900 straw can. If you had, a if you straw, had the vocal, seriously. if you had the vocal cords of Jesus pumpkin, you would want to do everything that you could to, to preserve it as well. Thank you. Now, <laughs> and the last one is no junk food. All junk food is actually banned, even for staff members and anyone who steps backstage. Wow, why? I mean, because she has to keep her diet up while she's touring, so it probably would be pretty tempting to see these people walking around eating chips and such. Like, no, she should, she's a grown woman. They she need, should know better. Well, she doesn't Can't, have to. she's grown. Well, apparently she doesn't have to know better. <laughs> uh, it's obvious. <laughs> All right, and that was actually our last story of the night, but we can't really move forward without acknowledging some sadder news. Um, Chris Kelly, member of the legendary group Chris Cross, was found unresponsive in his Atlanta home on Wednesday at the age of 34. Um, the cause of death was unknown at the time, but according to police reports obtained by TMZ, a drug overdose was likely the reason for his untimely passing. So it's very sad, you know, um, they had that social death reunion a couple months ago. I saw the clip there. Yeah, and um, they were talking about Chris Claus coming back together and dropping something, so it's really sad. Well, I don't know that I see that. Um, Pumpkin, did you used to wear the Yeah, backwards I wore my clothing? clothes backwards, yes. Did, did Chris Claus make you jump? I jumped. Hmm. I used to be in love with him. Really? I called him Dark Skin Chris. <laughs> it was a Dark Skin Chris, you know. <laughs> so... You know, light skin, dark skin thing. People, everybody thinks everybody wants somebody light skin. It's not true. I wanted the dark skin. Huh. I always loved him, but he had been sick, you know, in the past. <laughs> so. Yeah, he. Um. So our condolences definitely do go out to him. Chris Cross is our legendary. They have their place in hip hop, so much respect to them. Let's turn to the concert, though. Oh, it's gonna be so fun, <laughs> y'all. All right, we're actually going to go ahead and place the number on for you guys. Again, it's 804-915-5202. It's going to be at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the top 10 ways to spot a shady person. So later on, we're going to be talking about your stories of betrayal, maybe some stories of betrayal that we've had. We'd mm -hmm. like to air it out here. So I'm going to teach you how to, how to watch and get these people and be aware mm. before, before it happens, hopefully. You ready? I'm ready. Pumpkin, have you have you been betrayed though? I have. Okay, so you'll have some stories for me know. later. Okay, that's I what's have. up. All right. So number ten, meeting this person could be compared to picking up a stray cat. Let me explain. A stray cat is a term for new and clingy acquaintances. Stray cats want to be immediately accepted. They want a home and someone to stick with, and that that hits the clinginess, right? So, this can often be behavior of a shady person. Shady people often crave intimacy in relationships, and they want to be your bestie five minutes after you meet. They ask for a lunch date, friend you on Facebook, and start texting you all in the same day that y'all just met. They will also tell you their life story, including highly personal details or over your first drink. Um, they'll volunteer to pick your kids up from school. Just all this extra stuff is like, I don't know you. We're just meeting. Why are you... Why are you giving me so much? So, however, these type of people's best interest is themselves, not you. Real relationships, whether it's meant to be a friendship or a relationship, they take time to build. And people that plan on actually being there, they, they build that with you. These people, they get right in. They want to sleep over your house the first day. But what do you why? Right. They want to call me, hit me up on Facebook, tweet me, add me on Twitter. Like, you don't you crowding me first yeah. day. Why are you so... Claustrophobic. Why do you want to be my friend? Can't do it. Back away. I'm uncomfortable. Need my space. Just stop. <laughs> 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 but have you ever experienced that? Like, where no. people are just crowding your space immediately? Uh, yeah, I'm a celebrity. <laughs> Hello. Every day, can no, I? Every day. But a shady individual who's trying to betray themselves as your friend, you're going to know their relationship yeah. status, their HIV status. You're going to know all of that the first day. So if you notice where they're Something giving you right, all right. of these major details <laughs> almost immediately, I'm going to need you to check into that. Yeah. Nine, nine. I agree with you. Number nine, they're lonely. Shady people don't really have any friends. They have a revolving door of people that they associate with 
and they're often the associate that is cut off when they stop speaking. If instead of their best friend's phone number in their phone, you find that the only number they really have on speed dial is their lawyer, you might need to start checking into that. What do you think, Pumpkin? I should have been checking people's phones. <laughs> Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people are just lonely out of depression or because they choose to be. But Some most people don't want to be around people like that. They tend to lie a lot. Don't listen to, to people always talking about their, they keep a small circle, et cetera. Everybody doesn't have a small yeah. circle, by choice. I keep a small circle. I don't <laughs> deal with everybody. I don't hang with girls. I don't hang with guys. Like, right. Some people, just, with? some people just continuously deplete the options that they do have yeah. in their circle. All so. I love is animals. I don't do people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't run across anybody like that. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, <laughs> because now I'm confused. <laughs> Number eight, they play a constant game of punk. What? <laughs> and I'm not talking about the popular show on MTV. You're, you're looking for work, right? These are examples. So you're looking for work, Pumpkin. Mm-hmm. And your sh- shady friend leaves you a voicemail saying, oh, girl, I see that job that you've been looking for. Hit me up. So you call her for the next one, two, three, maybe four weeks, and you're not getting any response to your voicemail. Now, eventually when you do talk to her, she forgot about this job. She doesn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't hear anything else about this. So what I, the reason I compared that to playing the game of punk is because shady people get off on getting that immediate attention by yeah. thinking they have something for you. Yeah. Or just they get off on faking you out, basically. Well, they want to <laughs> be the first to tell you about something that's not true. Right. Pretty much. They just want to get you all excited and then just step away. Some people actually get off by watching the reaction of disappointment. So. I agree. <laughs> Number seven, they only share your relationship in a negative light. For example, <laughs> the only pictures your friend puts on Facebook of you are with your eyes closed or in the worst pose that you could ever think of. <laughs> the gorgeous pictures of you that you took your time preparing for and that y'all are filtered and everything else, you're not going to see those on your pages. When you check their Twitter or their Facebook, you're only going to see the drama statuses about what y'all just went through or your business or whoever else they chose to argue for the week because that's all they get into. A shady person thrives off of drama. Exactly. <laughs> have you ever had but any? <laughs> nobody ever puts a bad picture up of me. Well, you I don't, don't have any, any bad pictures. You don't have any shady friends. I don't have any bad pictures either. Well, there was that I one. I don't have one. There was that one pumpkin. That one. Just that one? <laughs> <laughs> now, I fall out every year on my birthday. <laughs> but you knew what I was nothing, talking about. I understand. There was nothing wrong with my legs were perfectly wide open with a dress on. <laughs> But it's fine. But is there something <laughs> wrong that you knew exactly the picture that I was talking about? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I was trying to figure out, was it this year's picture or last year's picture? <laughs> but if you start to notice where either your significant other or your friend is only posting stuff to the public of you when it's in a negative light, you might want to start to think about what you are to them <laughs> and what your relationship really means. Number six. You start to notice that you've slowly developed a clone. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind I said previously. Yes. <laughs> Keep in mind previously that I said shady people are equal to stray cats. They cling to what's available to them. So it won't be long before you start noticing them using your, the way that you talk, your style. Mm. Her new earrings look surprisingly like the ones that you just bought last week. So her new hairstyle, it looks What about a hobby? Like, like let's say a radio show. Oh, and then she just gets one. Oh, oh, you know what about that? What about t-shirts and e- never mind. Let's get back oh, yeah. to the top ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so you'll start to notice where they they start to leech off of you and are doing everything else that you do. If you find yourself hiding your new purchases or your new projects from somebody who's supposed to be close to you, mm-hmm. that's a shady bitch alert. You need to check that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number five. They're condescending. Shady people always leave room for insult. They prefer to drive you crazy and use, quote, unquote, shade whenever possible. Example. Did you get a haircut? No. Why I get a haircut? Mm. 
<laughs> what? Uh. <laughs> so yeah, they'll ask you questions for that. <laughs> you questions around Ken, like, I don't get haircuts. <laughs> it was an example of pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> God, you, why you can't say something like, did you get a perm yet? <laughs> okay. I see you don't got a perm. Okay, I see you don't like that example, so let's use another one. You spent hours at her place getting ready for that big night out and doing your hair and makeup and generally making yourself look good. But this person, they then tell you that she's jealous you can pull off the get out of bed look so easily. <laughs> Why can't Shade. you just why can't you just tell me something nice without bringing me down? Why why didn't yeah. you bring it up? <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. And that a- actually leads us into our next number, which number four. They can never quite grasp the concept of a compliment. She'll only compliment you by comparing you to her. So for example, oh, oh yeah. You yeah. are so like me. That dress is gorgeous. I will wear that. Or I got one just like that. Yeah, I bought the same one. I last bought that year. last year. Mm-hmm, I got that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I bought and, that last and year. of course, most things are about them, and they make sure you know that they are, in their mind, the best. And whatever they do. <laughs> and whatever they do. Because mm-hmm. we don't know what it is half of the time. Well, yeah, you be trying to figure out what are you actually doing. <laughs> Not understand. Or I can also go another direction, a little bit more personal. You introduce your friend to your new boyfriend, who you're madly in love with. Mm-hmm. And... They, of course, tell you that he's cute for you, yeah. but I would never. He tried they, to holler at me he's, before. He's not my type. I, I shot him down oh, a while Oh, you just met him? Oh. I bet met him, <laughs> Exactly. He was mine, like, <laughs> last year, this time. Exactly. So a shady person, you're never going to really get a real compliment out of them. They're, they're going to yeah. shut it down. So definitely pay attention to how your significant others or friends compliment you. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually getting down to the wire. Let's go, Ken. <laughs> I'm ready for number one. Number three. Mm. No matter how bad they do their best to convince you that it's good. <laughs> <laughs> they just can't tell you it's good. <laughs> when you gain a few pounds and people are continuously trying to motivate you to lose some weight and help you out, the friend is going to tell you that you look fine. Or either they're going to make you look, well, not make you look, they're going to make you feel guilty about it or helpless, like you can't fix it. They're mm-hmm. not going to help bring you up to get you get out of the bed. They want you to stay there. Mm-hmm. They want to bring you down with where they obviously are in their heart. Um, so another example. <laughs> so you've been invited to a friend of me's house for dinner. Mm-hmm. This friend of me knows that you're a vegetarian. Now, you get there. There's not the first vegetable on that menu. <laughs> and they tell you, well, I have a friend who is a vegetarian, and their skin looks dry now because they don't eat meat. Like, it's like they'll always have a reason as to why what you're doing is not the right thing to do. That's crazy. <laughs> well, what about these friends that let their friends go outside with leggings on? <laughs> and they about 350. <laughs> what? You got a friend of me, baby. What leggings is? ain't for everybody. Spandex ain't for everybody. Stop. <laughs> for real. If I was your friend, I would tell you, look, you know, Ashley Stewart somewhere <laughs> in the corner. They got nice clothing for a woman of your size. There's nothing wrong with, you know, being big. They, it's nice clothes. It's plus size sections in every store just about now. Forever 21, <laughs> Deb, Dot, all of that. All the popular little young girl stores. Rainbow even got a Rainbow? Section. I'm just saying. I'm just giving them examples, Ken. <laughs> they sell the most spandex. Please don't pick it up, though. <laughs> you got a friend of me. Because if they let you leave out the house like that, they're not right. Right. If I don't want you walking <laughs> around with me with no nag on neon pink leggings on you, 350. Right. So if your friend has you walking out of the house looking like a bag of rocks and your leggings, you, mm. they're not your friend. That's not right. Mm-mm. Y'all ain't living right. <laughs> and that all, number three also ties into number two because it reverses it. No matter how good you're doing, they're going to try their best to convince you that it's bad it or ain't, it ain't not good enough. It ain't all that so give me an example. Okay. You talk to your friend about a recent promotion to manager. Mm-hmm. Your shady person tells you how their friend got promoted to something else like president or how there are other positions out there or yeah. how they did that something better it. themselves. That, yeah, that more than off the time is a lie. Yeah, of course. Or let's talk about how no matter how well you're doing, 
how no, no matter how successful you are, which you do. A shady person is never going to acknowledge that. They're always going to tell you how you should have done it this way. Yeah. Or, let's just move on. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to do it their way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or they always have, give you the baddest advice. Right. They, they want to keep you down. What number is that? That was number two. The bad advice, though. They can play with you. The friend. That's under one. <laughs> oh, oh, dang it. I guess they don't know. No. I'm good. <laughs> okay, but number one, <laughs> give me a drum roll or something. Like, something. I'm beating on the table. Table. <laughs> I'm beating on the table. <laughs> New song dropping soon. Being on the table on iTunes May 17th. Yes. All right. Number one. <laughs> Why are going to be looking for it, though? <laughs> They're only around when they need something. So, you haven't heard from them in weeks. However, when your friend needs to borrow some money or they need an escort on this date that they're going on, they need to do a double date. Now, all of a sudden, they're ringing your phone and you're their best friend in the world and, and y'all need to hang out. Too bad she didn't answer any of your calls when you needed her three weeks ago. <laughs> hmm. So if you only notice where these people that are supposed to be prominent figures in your life are only around when it benefits them, to me, that's the ultimate sign of a shady person. Especially if I need you and you're not there for me, well, what's going on? I thought we were cool. I thought can, we were family. And that's what you call a user. <laughs> they using you, Kim. A user is definitely a shady person. Yeah, they using you. Yeah, they shady. Believe that. <laughs> they should just put all of the shady people on, like, one island and, and send them off. No. That island will be called Richard. You got to have somebody to keep you motivated. Very true. They're kind of close to haters. <laughs> They're kind of in the same circle. That's the circle that they were talking about. The small <laughs> circle that they hang with. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you guys want to sound off on any of the top ten, just give us a call at yeah. 804-915-5202. Um, also, we're looking for your stories of betrayal. So if you've had anyone who was supposed to be your friend or lover or your family member and they've done the ultimate bit of betrayal to you, Give us a call. We want to hear it. Air it out with us. Um, what what type of unforgivable moments have ruined your relationship with a friend? Right. That's a good one. <laughs> and we actually have a Dear Dirty Laundry letter that we can get into a little bit later, which, which is definitely a form of betrayal, and I'd like you guys to sound off on that when we get into it as well. Do you feel like you have one, Ken? An ultimate betrayal? It's going to sound a little bit cliche, but no. No? I'm a very, despite what I do, I'm a very closed-off person. I only have a select few people that I deal with. And no, it's not because I'm a shady person, like I said in this list. It's more so I, I'm aware of what's going on. I always tell people, beware and be aware of your surroundings. So I just don't. have. I've never been betrayed. And hopefully I knock on wood and not making it happen. But what about yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, I did. I actually, some a lot of the stuff that you said, um, I had somebody in my life that was like that, like a shady friend that was just there just to find out what was going on, seeking information, always having negative feedback, or just lying to people all the time. <laughs> it's like, what year is this? We're in 13? 2011 was the worst year. I met a lot of shady people. Tell and me. that's right when I first got into doing the radio show, and you you really found out who really was there for you and who really wasn't. Absolutely. When things start going well for yeah. you, that's when you really find out who your real friends and family are, unfortunately. It shouldn't be that way, but it, that's the reality that yeah. we live in. And then people just um, maybe copying your style. Like mm -hmm. you said, you know, just copying something that you're doing. You know, you work super, super hard to put something together just for them to go and duplicate everything you did. I mean, and they consider themselves they try to duplicate. Try, them. try very never hard. Never really but. happened. You know. I, I mean, I never, I looked at it like, Coke, I'm a Coke great teacher. One. Taught you a lot. Wait a minute. I can't let you go like you didn't say what, what I heard. Tell me about some of these shady stories, though. What shady, what shady moments did you have? Aaron Alpha or something. I really don't have one that I'd like to talk about. I'd rather not even bring them from the dead. <laughs> we buried them. We buried them last year. <laughs> okay. May um, they rest in peace. 
well, since Pumpkin won't share her experience with a betrayal, I did get a couple of different feedback from you guys on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, which I definitely appreciate. So shout out yeah. to everyone who contributed. Um, so we're actually going to go through a couple of those for a moment. And, and also you guys can call in and let us know what you think about these. Would you cons- even consider these betrayal? Just let us know. And also um, make sure y'all hashtag you know you shady one. You know you shady win. <laughs> hashtag hit us up on Twitter, TLL Pumpkin. And at it's Kim Barbie, at TS Kim Barbie. So I received a, I received some feedback from a guy, and he stated, I recently took a trip to Philly, I'm from Richmond, and had a blast with my boo and two of our best friends, only to find out that during the trip, that the boo had cheated on me with one of the best friends. Ooh. It was an awful experience, to say the least, and had a long, quiet ride back to Richmond. Oh my God. I could imagine. <laughs> I would not have been able to get into that car. And here's my question. And if you're watching, give me a call. I need to know the answer to this. Yeah. Were you driving? Because they wouldn't have gotten in my car. We couldn't have rolled back together. Mm-mm. You would have found a way. You would have caught the bus today. How does that come out, though? A shady friend. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm just, like, I want to know how did it come out. Right, Who would have ever brought it up? You know? So that's one. I mean, you know you shady when. You, you, you're doing well, my math. I got a story. Uh-oh. All right, so I met this guy one night, and me and him had a couple of drinks. We talked or whatever, 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 right? Three years later, I meet this other guy. Mm-hmm. And when I met him, he was like, oh, I'm riding with one of my boys, da, da, da. And it was the dude, the other dude. So I'm thinking, look, we never did anything. Nothing ever happened. Why did you even feel the need to mention it to the new guy? Like, I really liked the new guy, and I was like, everything good. So when they pulled up, I'm like, it's never going to come up because all we did was go and drink. He told him, Like, oh, I talked to her before. I didn't think guys cared about that if, if sex is not involved. Why does it matter? Why does it matter? If you had my number before, if we went to get drinks before. I got friends that mess with guys that I've been out with before. We had a drink or something. It just won't us. It didn't work out. So do you consider that betrayal? Yeah, I was betrayed because I really liked that guy. So if you went out with the guy. He betrayed me, and I ain't even know him. <laughs> now, I would never you do this. You betrayed me, and you ain't even know it. I would never do this, Pumpkin. You know I love you, girl. But if you were dating a guy, and y'all didn't work out, maybe yeah. it wasn't even, it was a mutual agreement not to be together. And later on, you saw him walking in on my arm. Would you feel betrayed by me as well as that person? The guy? Yeah. No, I, I honestly would be like, wow. Didn't know. <laughs> Okay, maybe bad example. What if it was a female Pen. friend? Didn't know. <laughs> Glad you let me know, Pen, that he does guys and he does girls. No problem. I Pen, didn't. Let me know how it was. I didn't mean in the sense. I mean, I'm just saying. That's how you came I off of me, Pen. I was speaking you got to understand. I mean, as a friend in general. I try to respect <laughs> your sexuality and what you choose to do with your life, okay? <laughs> All right? I try to respect that. So you're going to tell me that a guy that I was talking to <laughs> decided he wanted to be with you, fine. Okay, okay, okay. What if a female friend did the same thing? We got some problems. Okay. So Houston, you w- we got a problem. So you with her? Number one. Problem. Number one, if she knew about it. If it's a best friend and she knew about it, yes, I would. <laughs> yes, I would. I, I think I would as well, actually. Um, I think it kind of just breaks the girl guy code. You never really date someone else that your friend has already dated you just yeah you just don't i agree <laughs> thank, thank you for calling, calling dirty, dirty laundry. laundry yes i'd like to uh, comment on that remark that you just said if uh, you were dating a guy and then i would come in the young man said i would come you might see me come in with him one night on my arms how would you consider that as portrayal i would consider it as i'm glad i was found out I actually wasn't speaking gender specific. How would you feel if a female friend of yours walked in with someone you were formerly dating? Say that again now? How would you feel if it was another female friend that walked in with a guy that you were previously dating? Okay, I thought you were speaking gender. Um, It really wouldn't bother me per se. Uh, May the best girl win. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Thank you. 
Thank you for calling. That's right, bro. She's secure. She don't, she don't yeah, have to worry about it. Obviously, she didn't want him, so to the next one. I'm the jealous type. <laughs> I mean, I think it kind of depends on... We ain't on never had to do nothing. If I just gave you my number, you better not talk to one of my friends. But I think it would depend on where you are in your life. If you've moved on and you're happy with your significant other, why would yeah, you it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. I'm possessive. So if you're married now, you've been married for the last three years, if somebody picks up your boyfriend from 10 years ago, you're going to be mad? I got some problems with that. Yes, I do. <laughs> if I know you and if it's a friend, it's like, so the whole time I was with them, you were sitting back trying to figure out when you could get them, right? I feel Oh, so okay. that's, you okay. are shady. I get it. Shady. Okay. Okay. So is that how you doing yours, though? You going to just take one not. of my guys? <laughs> that's all I'm saying. We're going to talk about this when we get off the air. <laughs> I would never do that to you. Just saying. I would never do God, that. God. It's against what my... What is this world coming to? <laughs> it's against my personal I code. never thought I had competition <laughs> with you, though. You don't. I love oh, you. Oh, God. I didn't <laughs> think I was going to have to go to <laughs> All right. Let's go into another scenario. Okay. <laughs> this one, this one, I felt this. I would definitely felt betrayed. Let okay. me know if you feel the same. Another guy, he stated, my recent relationship was ended in the ultimate betrayal. My ex cheated on me and was sexting his ex who lives in California. Also, paying his bills and sending money to him while we lived together. Excuse me? Girl, what? Who money? Sending who money? If we're, we moved in together, hmm. so that money, that's ours. That's for our household. And you're sending this over to the next? In California. In California. You, you can't even get to them. Yeah. So that's right. We have to talk about that. That's definite betrayal. That's that's a deal breaker for me. And sexting though. Wonder what they sexting. was doing in them text messages. What do you think oh they God. was doing in there? Sending naked pictures. <laughs> that's sexting. Would you would you feel betrayed if you found out your partner was sexting someone? Is that the same as physically cheating? It depends on what kind of sex it is. So here we go again. If betrayal comes, if I see a penis in this phone, <laughs> we got some problems. Okay, a couple different ones. That's when we have some issues. If it's women, say for instance, it might be a butt or some breasts or something. I, I don't care. I'm cool with that. Fine. Really? Hello, you watch porn? No, I forgot. No, 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 no. You don't do anything. You There's don't. a clear difference. Okay. No, it's not a difference. <laughs> These porn stars, you don't have access to them. That's some like of them the take some nasty pictures, mm -hmm. Ken. You better go no, to Google. You don't have act the same access to a porn star that you have to the girl that lives next door and she's sending you naked pictures. At that point, Ms. that's Parker, unacceptable. Miss Parker, Miss <laughs> Parker. <laughs> so, for example, okay, that's, say your significant other had a photo of Megan Good half naked in, in his phone. I'm cool with you that. You wouldn't be mad at that. Yeah. So if you saw me. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw me just. Perched up naked on the phone. <laughs> How would you feel? <laughs> I already told but you I said I can't deal with that. He can man. get access to me, but he can't get access to Megan Good. So it's a it's a difference to me. Yeah. Ah oh, man. <laughs> and then also I have another story. Quite a few. So <laughs> this one states I had a friend that always said she had my back. She wanted me to be in her wedding, which I was. Over time, I found out she was married. Her, she married her hubby because he asked and said yes out of love. Not out of love, but because she felt he was her only option. Mm. All the while, she really wanted my hubby. And at our wedding, she made the statement, they are not going to be together long because he was meant for her. He was meant for me. Ooh. She then told people he only married me because he felt obligated and because I got pregnant to trap him. Mm. Wow. That's deep. They were best friends? They were supposedly best friends who had each other's back. Mm, mm, mm. I wonder if he hid that. <laughs> I, that's a good question. I'm, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm not just keeping <laughs> it real. <laughs> I'm not going to reveal your name out of respect. I'm sorry. Um, I got a, a it, man's it, mentality. I just, <laughs> my bad. I'm not going to reveal your name out of sex. respect. I but just want to know. I would love for you to give us a call and elaborate on your story. Please I do have call some us. Eight zero four nine one five five two zero two. Please give us a call. I definitely could see him probably hitting that. Why is he happened. that interested? It's no reason for you to be that pressed about him. They're getting married. Something happened in the past for her to say we're meant to be. Something had to happen. Questions that need answers. Definitely. Give call us a call. Eight zero four nine one five five two zero two.
<laughs> That's bad right there, Tom. Let's um d- do a few quick, you know, you shady wins. <laughs> I got some. You got a few? I got a few tweets. I got to go find that. <laughs> this person said, you know, you shady win. You tell a friend you can't stand a person. Five minutes later, you see that person and it's, hey, what's up, fam? I can't stand when people do that. I agree with that. Like, yeah, I, you talk all this junk. You talk about how you don't like them, how you don't mess with this person. But I see y'all on Instagram and pictures together. What is this about? <laughs> it's called being fake. Okay. It's <laughs> been I, fake. And I have another one. Um, You know you shady when you're still sleeping with your spouse's sibling after you didn't got pregnant by that same sibling and said you weren't going to do it no more. Oh, wow. That's a lot going on there. What happened now? She says... You still sleeping with your spouse's sibling after you didn't got pregnant by that same sibling and said you wasn't going to do it anymore. Well, I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't have gave them another chance to do it again. You got my sibling pregnant? And just because you said you weren't going to do it anymore? That's be- that, that is betrayal to me. That's my family. Well, I have a, um, you have two cell phones, one on a monthly plan and the other is a track phone. You know you shady. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we actually covered that into one of the reasons that you should snoop on our first season. Why do you need two cell phones if you're not doing anything shady? If you're not a businessman and that's not a strictly business phone, we have some, some things that we need to talk about. There's nothing wrong with having a track phone. Oh, my God. It's the business line. Exactly, if it's a business line. You got but, a business and a personal phone. But what did I, if, if it's homeless Johnny who doesn't have a job up the street, why does he need two phones when we're in a relationship? Because somebody gave it to him. He's homeless. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Man. I have to watch my words with you. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I dissect stuff, and I try to find the good in everything. If you're homeless and you tell me you don't have a cell phone and I got an extra track phone, I would give it to you. <laughs> that is what happens. Okay. Let's flip it. All right. Your significant other. You're just cleaning up around the house Sunday morning, and you find a cell phone that you knew nothing about, and that's where you see these naked pictures of me. <laughs> <laughs> How would you feel? This isn't a business phone. This is a sexting phone. I'm going to call a, you, Ken. This is Ken, a I found your own phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ken, I think you left your phone in my house. Right, it better be my phone. A lot right? of naked pictures in here of you. Yeah. <laughs> I was so betrayed by that. I, I don't need you to have a secondary phone unless I know about it. What is wrong with it, though? I just don't, I don't understand what's the issue with having two phones. Why do you need it if you are not a business person? I got a TV show. I got a jewelry line. I got a radio show. Pumpkin, we do this all with one phone. FOMO. iPhone. The solution to all those problems. I get still got that's Google how, that's Voice. How you get Hold on, I got a Google Voice, and I still want another phone. <laughs> the other, the business line. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> do you want to get into the letter? Let's do it. All right. We only got 15 minutes. Now. Come on. Read the letter. You reading the letter? I'm going to go ahead and, do you want to read it? No. I don't got my glasses. <laughs> All right. She says, Dear Dirty Laundry, I'm in a situation that I have to say I put myself in, and now I don't know what to do. My best friend of nine years moved to another state about two years ago. Her boyfriend did not move with her. He actually stayed here in Richmond. Anyway, we all used to hang out and double date with me and my then boyfriend. A couple months after my friend moved, her boyfriend started making advances at me. I told him that I wasn't down for that because she was my friend and that wasn't okay. Well, a couple of months ago, I had surgery and my best friend came down to visit. She brought her boyfriend to my house with her, and from that day on, he started to call to check on me and text me. At first, it was just innocent. However, we were just hanging out one day, and he started to help me through my surgery. (laughs) You ready? (laughs) A month or so once I started feeling better, we engaged in oral sex that he initiated on me. I felt really bad afterwards, but continued to hang out with him and have sex. My boyfriend was not there for me. my boyfriend was not there for me at the time, so we broke up and I was lonely and vulnerable. That's a, so she still had a boyfriend. Okay. Wow. Okay. Eventually. Is that cheating? Absolutely. It's all sex. That's not cheating. 
Hold on, wait, pause. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to the letter you got. <laughs> so pumpkin. Okay. If you walked in on your significant other <laughs> performing fellatio. Why is it always come getting all these pleasures? Hey. What the heck is going on? <laughs> performing fellatio Why on another give me woman. An example where he walks in on me. Okay. Hey. Because of course you're not gonna feel like that's betrayal. <laughs> you can you having fun. So, if your significant other was performing fellatio on another woman and you walked in the house, you wouldn't feel betrayed? You're okay with that because he didn't stick it in her? It depends on who it is. What do Remember you mean? Remember, we were just talking about Megan Good a few minutes ago. Oh, my gosh, pumpkin. But we was. Okay. So, if it was Megan Good, give me those examples. Go ahead. <laughs> Beyonce, Rihanna, come on. Give me some of those <laughs> examples, Kat. Whatever. <laughs> not the homeless person on the street. No, not the homeless. We got some problems. Is the homeless person on the street? The letter can. Can we talk about it first? No, that's cheating. If, if you want me to give oral sex to somebody else, or you want a pass to do that, then we don't need to be together. Do it to me. Why do you do it to someone else? Oh yeah, I forgot. You can't have threesomes either. If it's if we agree to it and we, it's together, yeah. then that's a different story. But if you did this on you your own, you have a threesome, right? All right. We're going to get to the letter, but I just got one question for you. Mm -hmm. You have a threesome, right? Is it cheating if you decide to call that person again without, without you being person. there? Right. Why is Absolutely. Why is if it cheating? I, do I know about this? You shouldn't have never invited them in your room. But do I know that you called them afterwards? Or ain't none of your them? business. You are You're already, my partner. That everything ain't your business. If you already started it, Ken. You open the doors for this. That's what kind of life are you living? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> You started it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me back into the okay, letter. Go ahead. <laughs> because now I'm judging you. <laughs> I'm ADD, y'all. I go somewhere else. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so she states, eventually, because I felt lonely and vulnerable, me and my then boyfriend broke up. And me and my best friend's boyfriend started having actual sex. Mm. It's been six months, and I'm still seeing him. I no longer talk to my best friend, and I'm not sure if she knows about us. I think we stopped talking because she was mad at me for not showing her any support with her miscarriage. Wow. I'm not sure because she stopped calling me and I stopped calling her because I felt guilty when I talked to her. He broke up with her because of the long distance relationship and we have been quote unquote together ever since. I never expected to fall in love with him. The problem is I don't trust him now because of how he treated my best friend. I tried to break things off of him but I can't seem to let go. What do you think about this situation? I need a summary. Okay, so in the next cell, because that was a lie. How there did was, it start? There in was the beginning, somebody got sick. Right, there was babies and extra boyfriends and miscarriages. Okay. I don't know. Um, okay, but to sum it all up, <laughs> they were best friends. I'm not going to use you and I for an example this time. No. There were two best friends, these two girls. Um, the One of the friends moved away while her boyfriend and her best friend stayed here. Okay, okay. So the friend who stayed here ended up having to have surgery. Her out-of-town friend came to support her and took care of her and brought her boyfriend over, and that's where they started communicating. Mm. So after the friend went back out of state, that's when the oral sex started. The oral sex began, and they but began to develop a relationship. But she's sick, though, right? She was sick. She said she started to get better. I wonder what kind of surgery she had. <laughs> I just got a tweet that said, she is shady, 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 a cheater and not a true friend. <laughs> I mean, I have to say that I agree. I appreciate your honesty with the letter. Thank you so much for sending that in. But one, I feel like you're making excuses. I was lonely and vulnerable, so I had to break up with my boyfriend and have sex with my best friend's best boyfriend. That's not cool. Because there's not no other guys in America. There's, there was I no mean, one else not, to help no people. one else out here. Yeah, so that's definitely a form of betrayal. Shortage on men. Um, watching Dirty Laundry, this is going to be one of my favorite shows. Hilarious. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your support. But that's definitely, that would be the ultimate betrayal to me. If I found out that my best friend was sleeping with my significant other, that's, that's pretty deep. If, let alone, she's a girl. Let me tell you, you what she wrong no at. You ain't going to blame all this on them. <laughs> You're not going to blame all this on them. Let me tell you what she wrong at. Why does she go back out of town? Because Why does she open up the door to bring her man to this girl house anyway? That's all broken it's, up. She he was trying to support her. She trusted her best friend and her maid. No, he, he was supporting this girl. <laughs> he was, so you're she saying won't have sex, so he decided to give us some oral sex, <laughs> right? Ken, 
Come on. You got to look at the bright side. The other person it's not a bright have, side to this. Why did she leave? <laughs> she shouldn't have left. Why are you going to leave your man she like had, that? She didn't well, You don't even life. know what she's doing. And she had a miscarriage in another city. Mm, Something right. Who answer. she partnered by? I'm guessing the guy. Hmm, you think so? Oh, I hope so. So much shade going on. <laughs> Again, if the writer of this letter is watching, you can give us a call as well. 804-915-5202. They were just supporting each other, though. I think he got lonely, too. (laughs) Got lonely, didn't he? I have another tweet. Um, They're stating they think that the out-of-town best friend was creeping, too. (laughs) Same thing you just said. I think so. I I think so. I mean, because it don't make sense to me that she was cool with leaving him around her friend like that. She knew they were going to be It's close. all in trust, though. You think about it. It's your best friend. Somebody who's been there maybe for years. Uh, yeah, and they probably had a lot of similar similarities. So possibly. He probably just wanted a piece of her. Right. You wouldn't leave your significant other with me out of state? No, Karen. You already told me what you're going to be doing <laughs> taking naked pictures and everything. He's uh, mad. Karen, I'm going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we got another one, uh, another tweet from our co-host, Richmond Black. She says, I'm tuned in. Y'all are too funny. We're going to Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go to Chipotle? Oh, my gosh. Y'all going to have <laughs> It's Milan's fault. Hey, Milan. No, you're watching. <laughs> For those that don't know, the Chipotle is an ongoing joke from the P-Show. Tune yeah. in tomorrow. Y'all, I'm, I'm sure, sure y'all going to hear the joke tomorrow. <laughs> y'all log on to the P-Show.com tomorrow at 3 p.m. Man, Ken, so where's your shady story? I've never been betrayed. Where's your betrayal? I've never been betrayed. You don't, don't have no it. haters. I do, but they don't, I don't, I don't care about them. So it's like they don't, I, they don't get it close enough to betray me. So people who, who lash out at me and attack me, make up their stories and so forth, I don't care. I don't How know old you. you Ken? I don't know you. How old are you? I'm 23 years old. So, for example, if there's like a 30-something-year-old man uh-huh. making up stories about me yeah. instead of focusing on their children, five or six or seven. <laughs> Sorry, can <laughs> tweet this. <laughs> One big city full of fake bees. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, and that's what I said earlier in the show. I feel like move all the shady people over to their own island. Hell, call it Richmond. But, Ken, for you to be 23, at 23, I was a loose cannon, like, you know, so you you do deal with a lot, you know, first of all, with being gay, you know, a black man being gay, um, having your own um, blog, shirt lines, everything that you're doing, you know, and the feedback you get, because I know you get a lot of negativity coming your way. You got a lot of positive, but you get that too. But at 23, I would have been going ham. Oh, everybody. I would be cussing everybody out. I'd be on this TV show right now going off. And you know what? I'm glad you said that because I do see a lot of people responding to their haters, quote, unquote. I hate that word because everybody uses it, but their haters, quote, unquote, on Facebook and Twitter. It's unnecessary. At the end of the day, if it's not true, even if it is true, you don't have to acknowledge it. If you don't acknowledge it, it doesn't exist. So let them do their thing. You good. That's what it is. I used to be crazy. At 23? I had a show at 23. I had a TV show on Comcast when I was 23. I mean, you have to think about it like this. Obviously, something's not popping about that person if they have to lash out at you every chance that they get. Exactly. I agree. Thank you for calling Dirty Laundry. Well, I like to have a question. Okay. What could you do? Yes. Leave him. <laughs> I mean, are you asking for something to do to get back at him, something to do to stay? What, what do you mean? Get back at him. To get back at him? Honestly, yes. I don't even think it's similar to what I was just saying with the haters. You, we'll get to the question. Thank you for calling. Um, but it's just like what we said with the haters. You don't have to acknowledge it. So if you're now unhappy because your partner just cheated on you, what good is going back and forth? going to do. Yeah. Eventually, that might just result in diseases. So, just move on. 
if you're not comfortable staying in that situation because of what's happened, just move on. You don't. That's your revenge. Just walking away. In a marriage, though. A and marriage. that's your breaking point. A marriage can. Everybody has their own breaking point. You don't point. just walk away from marriage. We're talking houses, cars, jobs, you money. Me. I don't care. You don't just walk away from marriage. I'm going to walk away. You I don't have time. Away. You ain't never getting married. So. <laughs> you ain't never getting married. I forgot. Me? I forgot you're going to be married next year with two dogs, a fence. Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for calling Dirty Laundry. Hey. Hey, y'all know what it is. Richmond Black. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't y'all say my name. Y'all say my government name on TV for a Barbie. <laughs> you know, here's my thing. Y'all know popping. You know how I feel about haters. As long as I think that you care about them and whatever they're saying about you, you're making them relevant. Exactly. You make you keep them relevant, and they know that that you're gonna always have some type of retaliation, or that you care about what they're saying. So I'm what you can. So yeah. what you wanna say? I can care less. Exactly. You're not paying no bills in my house. That's right. At all. So I mean, you, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna allow you to be relevant in my life. Evidently, I'm more relevant to you than you are to me. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Thank you for uh, calling, Wendy. You're welcome. Don't get ready time. for the pee show now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> my boo. <laughs> <laughs> they got to go to work. And I'm, I'm glad that you said that. You, you yeah. really, obviously, I'm more relevant to you that you have to sit around and, and yeah. do this. Like, who has time? I mean, we get it a lot, you know. Like, get some busy about yourself. You get used to it. Make now. some money. Do something. Like, it doesn't have, everybody, everybody don't know how to do that. Everybody has to drive. Me. The ambition, they're not focused. They focus on everybody else and what they're doing and not worried about what they're I look doing. at it like this. Everybody gets the same 24 hours in a day. I don't think so. What you choose to do with that, that's I don't think they do. <laughs> I don't think they do. Thank you for calling Dirty Laundry. Hello, so if my wife had uh, her dogs were dirty, what could I do? If her thongs were dirty? Right. We don't know. Wash them. Yeah. <laughs> wash them. Yeah. Just wash them. Tell her to wipe her ass. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for calling Dirty Laundry. Hi, how are you? Hello. Yeah, how are you? Um, I just wanted to call in and vent a little bit. And this is actually in reference to the top ten shady, um, or whatever. How to spot a shady person? Okay. Um, Do you look at that as her betraying you? I have to hide everything I do now from this person. Just oh, my God. Home. Are y'all friends? Do you consider y'all friends? I mean, she's a person that's clingy, like the um the first thing you said. Like Great the thing. Wow. Wow. Thank yeah, you so much for I calling. Just, I just wanted to vent. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Originality is vintage. So, I mean, they can copy it, but they'll never do it like you. We got like two minutes, Karen. Oh, I want you to oh. take it. Oh, wow, okay. We only got two minutes. Okay, but you guys can hit us up <laughs> on Facebook and Twitter. We want to keep this conversation going. Um, Definitely. And also share this with your friends. The episode will actually be up by tomorrow, so you guys can comment on the video as well. Um, but let us know. Give us your hater stories, your betrayal stories. We want to know how you feel. Definitely. Um, and again, listen to the P Show tomorrow from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m thepshow.com uh, and also make sure y'all follow us on Instagram follow at my new story one celebrity status jewels follow that at celeb stat jewels also follow TLL pumpkin and you can find me on Facebook I am pumpkin Gwen. check me out it's kimbarbie.com Instagram Central Kim Barbie and Twitter it's Kim Barbie that's at TS Kim Barbie the number one source for news and entertainment oh yeah Kim Barbie appreciate you so much the day three 
What's wrong? We're going it's to like have... I wake up like, why me? We're going to have drinks. <laughs> I wake up like this every morning. Because Ken texts me. <laughs> Ken Barbie Appreciation Month. What? <laughs> you appreciate it. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. Thanks Thank for, you guys for watching. Yeah, definitely. We'll be back next Friday night at 9 p.m. Compact 95 Verizon 36.